Hi, Freaky Friends. This is Margaret. And this is Colleen. And, and we're, we're the, the cousins, cousins Weird. Weird. We were together in the beginning. And then... Were we? Yes. I, I can never end, tell. Never. Yeah. On my end, we're never together. <laughs> <laughs> no matter but how long. We, we're virtual again because Colleen caught COVID again. Poor Colleen. Yep. That's the COVID. Your dang nephew. Oh. Bread and the love. Yeah, I was uh, quarantined. And then I seven days after exposure, I got it. So yeah. I was out of work for five days, went back for two days, tested positive, back out of work again. <laughs> Jeez. Quarantine is more fun than being sick, though. So yeah. Being sick is stupid. <laughs> My house has pink eye because that's fun, too. My middle child woke up the other morning. Well, on Wednesday, my littlest one woke up with her eyes stuck together. She couldn't open her eyes. Yeah. But she didn't have, her eyes weren't pink. They were just, like, crusty. It was gross. And then, like, the next night, my middle child, Evie, she's like, my eyes feel weird. And they're all goopy. I'm like, oh, great. And the next morning, her eyes were, like, red. Ugh. It looked gross. So I had to cancel all of my clients and take her in. It was fun. Uh, I get pink eye just like you said pink eye, so I'll probably have it. That's how <laughs> That's easily how I get pink eye. Easily you catch it. Yeah. Yes. Well, Every no, time so. a kid had pink eye, I got it at school when I was in when I was teaching. It was like, oh my god, just don't look at me. I'll get it. <laughs> so like to the doctor, can you just give me on a, a an IV drip of that medicine? Just like yeah, have it drip it my eye at night, like an automatic thing. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. That's what I needed. Yeah. Um, I want to just ask you if you heard about the stuff they found underneath of Notre Dame. No. The sarcophagus and <gasps> stuff. I just cool. read an article about it that they found a sarcophagus and all sorts of other cool stuff. You got to read about it. Um, well, that kind of ties into our it's some like current news um, kind of around what we t- like to talk about on here. So I Saw that and I was sure. like, oh yeah, tell Margaret about the sarcophagus that they found. And they feel like the they haven't opened it yet, um, but they found all this other stuff. They found a man's bearded man's head. Um, his beard was still attached in the, with it and some hands. And oh. it's just very odd. And I, I don't really know the sto- what the story is going to be, like why there's a head and some hands in there. But a um, bearded they head. It's not just the head. A bearded head. It's a bearded head. It was a bearded head. head. Yeah. So I don't know. I thought that was really interesting. So I'm, it's kind of like um, a new finding. So it's like something we can follow and see what's happening there. Yeah. <clears throat> well, this week I'm back to my my antics with an old mystery. I'm going to be talking about the mysterious death of Edgar Allan Poe, which I didn't even know he had a mysterious death until I came across it in this cool book that I was reading. So the book that I found this information in, and I'll be getting more information because this book is pretty cool. It's called Rest in Pieces, The Curious Fates of Famous Corpses. Cool. Yeah, it's pretty neat. And I I found this, um, there's a whole chapter on Edgar Allan Poe, and I'm like, what was weird about his whatever, his corpse or whatnot? Most people know him. He's a famous poet and short stories. Uh, is, yes. I'm obsessive about Poe stuff. I know. Poe is, he was pretty amazing. He, I mean, The Raven is probably his most famous work. Um, The Telltale mm-hmm. Heart, another one. He was very dark, very Victorian, you know. Right up my he, alley. Yeah, he is considered to be the inventor of the detective fiction. And he was an early contributor to the new genre for the time of science fiction. So like Mary Shelley, Edgar Allan Poe, they were all in that same yeah. like early science fiction type novelist or writer. He was born in Massachusetts on January 19th, 1809. Um, and his parents were actors. They were stage actors, obviously, because this is, 1800s there's no movies then um and their names were they were english they were david and elizabeth poe he was the middle child he had an older brother named william and a younger sister named rosalie and i swear i'm just gonna do a brief 
history before I get into like the mystery surrounding his death. But I wanted to okay. kind of lay the groundwork a little bit about his life. His father abandoned them when he was about a year old. Oh. And then shortly, like shortly after that, his mother died. And he was three when his mother died. So it was just like a year or so That's later awful. after his mother died. I think she had, she probably had tuberculosis because like everybody died of tuberculosis back then. Um, he was raised for, he was, he wasn't never adopted by this family, but they were his foster family and they were John and Francis Allen. They were, he was a tobacco merchant and they brought him to Virginia from where he was in Boston. He spent, he was close to his foster mother, but he had kind of a volatile relationship with his foster father. His foster father was mean. They said that he, it was said that he, he beat him. When he misbehaved. Mm. And at the age of 13, he was already writing poems, which is not a surprise because he was no. such a good poet. Um, And it, this was discouraged by his then teacher or tutor um, and his fo foster father. And his foster father wanted him to work in the family business with tobacco merchants. In 1826, um, Edgar enrolled in the University of Virginia but he had trouble covering the cost of tuition and his, he, it was kind of the thing that he was, he would argue with his father the most about you're not giving me enough money for school. I don't have enough money for tuition or to live. And he turned to gambling to cover uh -oh. the fill in the blank, the, the spaces of his income where he needed. And that was not a good idea because it ended up leaving him in debt and he was forced to go back home. He didn't finish his schooling. And on his return, he discovered his fiance, who was a girl by the name of Sarah Elmira Royster, who was also his neighbor. She had become, in his absence, she became engaged to someone else. Oh, and this, nice. yeah, yeah. So this forced him. He moved back to Boston and he joined the army. And he spent two years with the army, where he wrote his first collection of poetry called Tamer Tamerlan. And other poems. He ended up going into West Point and he was kicked out of West Point after a year. And it wasn't, they said he was a hard worker, but he just wasn't doing a good job. You know what I mean? Like he just right. wasn't good at it. So they, they kicked him out. I mean, he's a poet. You can imagine he he's probably an was not, not a good army person. Not a soldier. He was not a good soldier. <laughs> no, no. Army. That's what I meant. Soldier. Duh. <laughs> he, he then started working as a literary critic for different journals and periodicals. And he moved around between um, a few different cities like Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York City. And from 1831 to 1835, he lived with his Aunt Maria Clem and her daughter in Baltimore, Maryland. And her daughter's name was Virginia. And she was 13. Oh, and Lord. in 1836, when Edgar was 27, he married his 13-year-old cousin, Virginia Clem. Mm -hmm. Child bride time. Yeah, and it's just like, uh, in this day and age, it's just icky. But, I mean, back then it wasn't that abnormal. I mean, she was his first cousin. I think that mm -hmm. either Maria, Maria was either the sister of his father or the sister of his mother. And I, I can't remember which one. I didn't write it down. But... They were first cousins, and she was 13 years old. <laughs> she was a child, Yucky. Um, which is gross. At the time, they didn't frown upon that. Like, it wasn't no anything that abnormal. You know, even marrying your cousin wasn't even a weird thing, I don't no. think, back then. Victorian era, everything went. Anything I mean, went. they, he, for all intents and purposes, like, they were happily married, as far as I could see. And, I mean, they got married in 1836, but in 1847, Virginia died of tuberculosis. Um, he actually published The Raven in 1846. So, he published The Raven, and the next year his wife died of tuberculosis. So, uh -huh. like, everyone's like, oh, it's, he, he's had a lot of loss with the women in his life. Like, first his right. mother, and then, you know, his foster mother, and his fiance the, his ch childhood sweetheart abandons him and gets engaged to someone else and then his wife child bride cousin died 
At this point, she wasn't a child anymore, <laughs> but still. Child bride <laughs> cousin. Yes. And after Virginia's death, Poe became mentally unstable, and he began to drink a lot. And a lot of people who knew him said that he didn't tolerate drink well at all. They said he would have one glass of wine and become really ill. So oh. he was still drinking, and he... I don't want to say he had an alcohol allergy, but he didn't tolerate it very well. So I'm sure that it made him even worse. You know, like he was right. kind of his mental health was deteriorating and he was drinking a lot, which probably didn't help. At this point, he was supposedly engaged to a poet named Sarah Helen Whitman. Um, but she called the engagement off and he returned to Richmond and started. She called it off. And they said that her mother kind of leaned on her because they didn't like his instability and his drinking and they're like you need to not you need to call off the wedding you don't need to be married to this you know find someone else right. um and sense. then he, he returned to richmond virginia and guess who was ready for a new marriage his old uh flame sarah elmira royster and oh. they became engaged again goodness so on he september where 20- the money was yeah on September 27th, 1849. So this is really only a few years after Virginia died. Like he didn't wait long. It, he, his wife dies in 47. And then by 1949, he's already been engaged to two different women. <laughs> so he, he was looking for love, right? Um, he was. Yep. So on September 27th, he told Sarah that he had to be in Philadelphia and New York City for a few weeks to do some editing work for a woman. And they were supposed to be married fairly quickly like they were having a very quick engagement um but after he left he disappeared he was next then he didn't like people didn't they figured he was because i mean there's no phones they figured he was in philadelphia and new york city but he was next seen in baltimore in baltimore maryland six days later on october 3rd and a man found him outside of a tavern um and he was wearing clothes that were not his he was filthy and near to unconsciousness he was found outside ryan's tavern on lombard street by a joseph walker who poe told to notify like he he found him laying in the in the dirt or the mud and he's wearing filthy clothes not really conscious but just like enough to say like i who can I get for you? He's like, tell Dr. Snodgrass, who he knew. <laughs> and he resided. He actually that name is ridiculous. Tavern. Snodgrass, I know. Snodgrass. Snodgrass. It sounds like something from Willy Wonka. I know. Snodberries taste like snodberries. The Snodgrass snodberries. lives next to the tavern. But yeah, he, this Dr. Snodgrass that he knew resided really close to the tavern. And I mean, it's like, instead of, going to find this man this joseph walker wrote a note and sent it to him and it said oh, that's good yeah he this no i they have copies of it it says dear sir there is a gentleman rather worse for wear at ryan's fourth ward polls who goes under the cognomen of edgar a poe and who appears in great distress and he says he is acquainted with you he is in need of immediate assistance. Yours in haste. Joe W. Walker to Dr. J. E. Snodgrass. So, it was a different uh, time. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. It was a so, uh, let me write a letter. This person <laughs> needs immediate assistance. Right. But let me write a letter to you. Yeah. Makes sense. Like, all right. So, when Snodgrass arrived... And it doesn't tell me, like, I couldn't find out how long it took him to get there. I don't know if it was, like, right. within an hour or the next day or when. But when he arrived, he found Edgar with a, in quotations, bloated and unwashed face, a oh. gaze of vacant stupidity, and in an ill-fitting shirt, sadly crumpled and soiled. It's just funny that they keep mentioning that he's in wrinkly, dirty, dirty. clothes. Yeah. But it also is said that Poe was always dressed well and in fashion. Like, he was 